Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about recruiting, hiring, the whole gambit. So if you're a one-man show or you have employees, either way, this is going to be a good one. Make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Uh, thanks for spending some time with us. If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully it doesn't suck. Hopefully it's better than a cat video. But either way, check it out. We have uh, 190 plus episodes. It comes out every single week. And it's been going on for almost four years now. So you got tons of content. Go catch up on everything. But if you are one of the cool kids, or even better, one of the epic cool kids, that means that you watch every episode, you comment, you thumbs up, you buy supplies through me, and of course, you're subscribed to the America Window Cleaner Magazine. What's up? It is because of you that I get to wash my clothes in name brand laundry detergent. So thank you so much for everything. But if you do want to put an order in with me, my number is 862-312-2026. Yes, that's a real number. I get people like every week like, oh my gosh, it's actually you answer the phone. That's what it's there for. So call me or text me if you have any questions. If you have questions on bidding something or business questions, you can always send me an email to jersey at windowcleaner.com. Well, thank you so much. Uh, first off, I wanna say a big shout out to Micah. The only shout out I have this week because this, I didn't write anybody else's names down and I just talked to him and I told him I'd give him a shout out. So what's up, Micah? Uh, congrats, man. Well, today, uh, after a rushed intro, uh, we're talking with Sean all about recruiting and uh, hiring, which is probably the biggest headache that any of us run into. Not you, maybe, because you have things in place, but for anybody else, it is a headache. And this time of year, we're all scrambling to try to get employees, but we don't have the work yet for the employees, but you can't have the employees after you have the, it's this big catch 22, but Sean, what's going on, man? How you doing? Uh, thanks for having me on today, Josh. Definitely, definitely. Well, if anybody is living under a rock and doesn't know who you are, or what you do, tell us everything. Okay. Well, uh, Sean, Dave Blue Sky Services. I owned a cleaning company myself for about 20 some years in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, mine was more of the interior house cleaning for Mr. and Mrs. Jones, then some medical buildings and things like that. Blue Sky Services, big cleaning company outfit in Minnesota. We got together and decided that uh, we wanted to grow a business company together, and we did. We bought uh, through acquisitions, that was our growth strategy, so we bought several cleaning companies, and we came across the, um, a pretty big one, and uh, uh, they, it was a couple that owned it for 30 years. We bought it, they retired, and about 12 of their employees went along with them. And so uh, we're boogieing around, we gotta hire a lot of people out there, and what we found out quickly was we were, mediocre at recruiting. And this is several years ago, by the way, Josh. And so what I said was, everybody leave me alone. I'm going to, I'm going to, we need to be world-class at recruiting for our window cleaning outfit. And if we're going to make this happen. And nine months later, I did almost nothing but put the system together for our company. It is very, very seldom that we are short staffed at Blue Sky Services. Nice. In fact, I'm recruiting for about 20 window cleaners for our own window cleaning company out in Minnesota in the next month and a half or so. Wow. Well, I have to say that I have not ever heard of, and it, by the way, if you're watching and this has happened to you, comment down below. I guarantee there's going to be no comments, but you lost 12 people like, like that, like literally one day, 12 people, 12 staff out of there. Like that's, that's a little overwhelming and it didn't even happen to me. Like that yeah. hurts my, my, my head just thinking of that. <laughs> and it was crazy. I mean, it was, there were, uh, it was a matter of uh, the, the owners gave us the keys before we opened the door, we opened it and it was like 12 people left and that was <laughs> it. And we're, we're nice guys. What, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Uh. Well, I have to say, uh, if anybody is watching the podcast or listening knows, I sold my company and I just didn't even want to like worry about my number one guy, like leaving and me being out of state. You know, I didn't even want to deal with that. So I sold my whole company. So I didn't have to deal with one person leaving much less 12 at one time. So that's, uh, that's pretty nuts. It is. It is. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
we've, we've solved that problem. And uh, right now to fast forward, we also recruit now and provide a recruiting service for mainly the window cleaning and house cleaning industry right now. Nice. And that's one big thing that, that helps kind of set you guys apart is that you know what you're talking about. You're not just some person who's like, oh, yes, I love the home exterior maintenance uh, companies. Yeah, you, you know. Yeah, I don't know of anybody else that recruits. And by the way, just very quickly, we didn't have this vision of starting a recruiting service. I mean, I'm, I owned a cleaning company. I didn't, I, had, I didn't own a recruiting service. Yeah. But what had happened was, and I think you guys will get a kick out of this, is um, we were get, I was on the phone and I'm going, I'm on the phone like 10 hours a week now talking with our buds out there in, in the window cleaning world about how we're doing this recruiting thing. And so we're, we start going like this, huh, we might be onto something here. I remember the first invoice we sent out, it was a buddy of ours and, he, and we said, we'll just kind of try to help you and see if we can help you. We got him like three, three texts and he says, how much do I owe you? This was great and I, I how much? Do, so I said, I'd maybe a case of beer, I guess. You know, I don't oh, know. Nice. So we, we sent an invoice for a case of beer. That was our first customer. Nice. Are you still running on those rates? Because I can, <laughs> I can get you some beer. I, I'm yeah, from no, Milwaukee it's changed, area. It's changed a little bit. It's changed uh, a little bit. <laughs> you're on to kegs now. I understand. I understand. <laughs> no, so, you know, it's, it's funny. I always say, like, there's big problems. You always have a problem bidding to some degree because people will look at jobs that are bigger than they've ever done and they'll look at it and they'll go, oh my gosh, I got a little bit of a headache. But the other side is recruiting. Like those two things, your employees and bidding are always, no matter how big, how small and how long you've been in business are always kind of the biggest kind of headaches. And in, we kind of talked about this beforehand, but if anybody's out there that's looking to hire in general, there's a process. There's something that you do or that should be done to kind of to vet people. We've talked to Dan Plata before and he kind of just touched on different things, but there's a process, right? Am I, am I, am I right on that? Tell Absolutely. us a little bit about kind of a process and hiring to make sure. it make sense for people. I think the, the two first mistakes I see are one, not doing the research in your labor market to see what your competition's up to. And when I say competition, I just don't mean another window cleaning company. Do you have Amazon warehouse in your area? That's a game changer, right? Um, other lawn care, if you're a window cleaner, that's sort of the labor pool that you pull from that sort of blue collar, right? Yeah. Do, the, do the homework. Really, it's important. The other thing I see is um, in job descriptions, this is a key. In job descriptions, I've seen through other business owners, don't do the vetting in the job description. In other words, yeah. you better do this or that's going to happen. You got to do that. If you're not this or, and, and you're in a, in a guy looking for 15 bucks an hour is reading this going, I wouldn't have my son apply for this job. Yeah. We haven't even gotten through the door yet. So <laughs> I'm getting yelled at already. That's not what a job description's for. Yeah. A job description and a job title needs to do one thing and one thing only. Produce as much application flow as possible. That's the name of the game for a job title, job description. So yeah. the word cleaning technician, I assure you that there are not a lot of window cleaners and house cleaners clicking, I need to be a technician. Yeah. That may be a nice fancy word and certainly appropriate for our businesses out there to hand to an employee and the job description has a purpose. This is what we expect you to do employee. With recruiting, the job description is nothing more than a bunch of keywords and strategically placed to cre create that application flow that starts the process. And, and yeah. after that, there's an entire vetting system that you need to really put together to uncover things about that applicant. So I always get this question and here, here's, you know, you've heard this, Josh, everybody listening to this has heard this. I can get applications on Indeed or Craigslist, but they all stink. They are, they're all terrible. And it takes a hundred of those applications to find one good employee. And here's the problem. You've got a thousand things as a business owner you're doing. And that one out of a hundred might be the 89th one you need to get in touch with. Yeah. If you don't have an automated system in a process together or, or, or outsource it to somebody, by the time you get to number 89, they're already on a window cleaning training down the road. So yeah. those are the things you really need to put in place. Automation's huge. 
Yeah. You know, to touch on one thing that you said that I, I find absolutely invaluable when it comes to hiring, when you're talking about an Amazon warehouse somewhere, they're going to pay somebody $17, $18 an hour to like pick stuff off a shelf. Like it's so hard to compete with that. Say, Hey, do you like to deal with mosquitoes and bees and rain and sun and dirt and thorns? And do you like all that? Because if you do, you know, come work outside. Otherwise you could work in a air conditioned, you know, uh, warehouse pulling stuff off a shelf. That, that's just, it's so, you have to know kind of where you're pulling from. Exactly. And, and that's, and that's important too. And, and there's, those are the things I talk about with specific questions and I'll give you one specific one. It's, that's a question we, you know, there's industry specific questions we ask when we're looking through and vetting candidates. And one of those is, um, for example, are you uh, more comfortable knowing you're going to get off at 5 PM every day? Or are you okay and comfortable knowing that you could get off at two at three or at seven at night? Yeah. That's, that's industry specific. You're not getting off at 5 p.m. in any uh, window cleaning or pressure washing company, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. and, and there's a whole mess of other questions. We like, to, we like to find out if we're hiring victims, okay? If you have a victim mentality, and let me throw this one out. This question's worth $5,000 to anybody that uses it, okay? On a scale from zero to 10, rate your luck in life. Rate Ooh. your luck in life. <laughs> At Blue Sky Services, the data shows this. this. I picked myself off the floor when I, when I did the homework on this. Those that answered under a six, rate your luck in life, zero is horrible, 10 is great. Under six lasted, on average, a whopping three months or less with our company. That wow. one question alone. That's great. The victim mentality. The victim. Yeah. My brother, I love him to death. Very quickly, he's that person. Love him to death. He'll win the lottery. $10 million lottery. The first thing out of his mouth is going to be, I can't believe how much I got to pay on taxes on this. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that human being. Yeah. Yeah. There's that uh, uh, positive and negative. There's two sides of every story. What side do you focus on kind of thing? I love that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's one of those things that uh, another kind of bit that when people like you said, they put a big net out and they just like, Oh, I just get a bunch of people in and we're just going to fingers cross. It's the questions you ask to find out. I'm the last, and this wasn't the last time I hired. This was quite a while ago. I've sold my company now, but the last time that I remember it was 22 applications that I did, uh, did phone interviews with kind of just real quick. Hey, this is what we do. And then we plan regular interviews, have them come in and speak out of the 22. We scheduled 12 people to do on real interviews Every 15 minutes we did it and uh, one person showed up and yep. the first question before he, as he was sitting down, he was like, I just wanted to ask real quick, do you guys drug test? Like, that was his first question. I'm like, well, no, Sorry. I mean, we don't, but I get where you're going already with that. So yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's a great point too. I mean, you know, those no shows, the old, do you have a pulse? Um, you know, that type of thing. And it's so destructive to your company though. If you think about it, your A players are sitting there going, and you never want to be short staffed either though. You need to have that because not only did you hire somebody and not vet them properly, but now they're working for you and they're late, their quality sucks, you know, and, but what can't, what you can't fire them. My God, I'll lose clients. I, I can't fire them. So it ruins your culture when you don't vet properly through the recruiting process as well. Yeah. At Blue Skies, the number of no-shows drastically reduced, drastically. You know the one, ten, just like you just said, 10 seconds into the interview, you're telling yourself there's no way on earth this human being's getting in front of a client, drastically <laughs> yeah. reduced. You, yeah. it, in fact, if you put a vetting system together, and, I, and anybody, um, I, I'll, I'll tell you this, anybody that reaches out to me, I've got the questions that we use, and I'll send it out to anybody that okay. wants free. Uh, but it's important. 95% of the people that make it to our interview table are hired because wow. of the vetting we do up front. Yeah. Now here's a question. So some people are more scared to be tight in the beginning. Well, you know, I got a bad feeling, but I think you'll be okay because they don't want to necessarily push. They hate hiring so much. They're willing to just tolerate that. What do you say to somebody who is tolerating something that they really shouldn't because they don't want to have to deal with it? I think that's time to outsource or find somebody that is willing to do that. You know, anybody listening to this or watching this, um, 
unless you own a bookkeeping company, you didn't get into window cleaning to be a bookkeeper. Okay. Yeah. None of us did. That's not who we are. Uh, you don't really do it to get into recruiting either. So go and either find as much as you can, or you hire somebody or outsource it just like you do. Unless you love to do tax accounting, you probably outsource that. If you yeah. don't like to recruit and there's an individual that as a window cleaner that will go fetch $80,000 in revenue for you a year, you better find somebody to do that the right way. If you don't like to, that's what oh I gosh. tell people. Yeah. I mean that, that part, we kind of, here's the thing, the employee, you know, people always, the employee thinks that they need you or that, you know, they're more needed and we think that we're more needed. It's not the case. If you have an employee, he brings you money, he or she, if you don't have employees, you can only cap out at so much. So employees are super, super valuable. Just the retention side of it is so much more valuable. If you can find somebody good right out of the gate, that means that you can kind of hold on to them a lot longer and you're not paying to have a new employee trained and, and lose you money and then eventually leave after three months. I mean, that's kind of the rotation that a lot of people are stuck in. And basically what you talk about, in my opinion, uh, is the hardest part of business and also the most profitable part of business, which is capacity and demand. That's what you're talking about there, right? Yeah. Capacity being your number of employees that you need to take care of your clients and the clients are your demand. If you match capacity and demand perfectly every day you're in business, you will be the most successful window cleaning or pressure washing company or house cleaning company on the planet. That's yeah. the name of the game. And that's why recruiting is so important. Yeah. Yeah, I love the uh, the ABH kind of concept. The, the always be hiring thing is always in my head yeah. to like always have people, a fresh pool of people so that you could pick from. Because here's the other thing, we're seasonal. Like all of us, yeah. we're pressure washing seasonal, uh, pressure washing seasonal, roof cleaning seasonal, gutter cleaning seasonal, everything is seasonal. So we need employees at certain times and we don't need them as other times. So when do you hire? when you need somebody or when you don't need somebody, what happens when they leave? It's when you need somebody, that's when they leave. Yeah. And we are, um, we have a hopper strategy, you know, we're, we're, you know, we call it the ABCs of recruiting, always be recruiting. That's what we yeah. call it. The ABCs. <laughs> nice. um, and, and our, you know, our clients and ourselves, what we have a hopper strategy. We have a great client out in Evans, uh, Georgia, owns a pressure washing outfit, five employees. He had, great retention, two of them left in one day. What oh, do wow. I do? Because he was using the hopper strategy that we recommended and that we use, he literally was able to turn around and hire two techs in two days, wow. two days. And that's because of the hopper strategy. And I, yeah. I always say, and I'll say it quickly, what is the hopper strategy? It's, it's having that pool of employees, even when you don't need to hire five starters on a basketball court, look at the bench, there's nobody sitting there. I promise you they're not working hard on their free throws and everything else. They look at the bench and there's five, six people ready to take their job. Their yeah. rear ends are working their butts off to keep that job. Same concept. Yeah. yeah. And that's the other side is that it takes time to put an ad out, to do a phone interview, to schedule an interview, to talk for the first interview. If you get all that out of the way, you can just pull, Hey, remember us? We talked to you. We just wanted to catch up, you know, follow up and all that. It's just, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. And, and, Josh, it's a lot like marketing. I always say recruiting and marketing are, are the same. You're, you're marketing after different thing, but you're, yeah. you're trying to get your best resource. It's, it's marketing to find the best human being to, to make your job in life as easy and profitable as possible. That's really yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. You and know, so we, we, go ahead. No, no, that's, I was just changing kind of gears and we, we've talked yeah. all about all these things that do work. What are some things that you see that just don't work at all? Like how can we learn from mistakes of like the masses? I think a few we touched on and that is, um, you know, create that hopper strategy. You don't want to just get into a, a, a game of, I need to hire anybody with a pulse, which all yeah. of us have done that. Um, that's, that's a huge one. I would say um, a couple of things that you need to understand too, is I want everybody to look into Google for jobs most of us haven't heard about it. It's a game changer in the world of recruiting. Hmm. Everybody knows Google, right? Um, about three years ago, 
uh, what would happen? We go to indeed.com as a job seeker, look for a job, zip recruiter, look for a job. 73% of job seekers today are starting on Google to search for their job. And Google decided they wanted to get into the recruiting game about six years ago, but about a year and a half, two years ago, they got a lot of traction. So what happens is somebody looks for a job, a cleaning job near me. Google for jobs pops up the top three jobs that will most and best identify that human being that mm -hmm. just typed that information in. Unlike wow. Google AdWords and throwing money to go get a client or Google or pay per click and get clients, right now at least, Google does not have anything you can throw money at to get listed on the top four or three positions to so acquire uh, employees. It's like actually it's, organic. It's very organic. You, under, you have to understand the tags, the, or, the algorithms, all those sorts of things. It's very organic. It's only organic at this time. And most of our clients and ourselves are on the top three. Wow. Wow. See, that's one thing that I didn't, I didn't even know that Google was doing that. I mean, I know that they should be into everything just because they have that. They're, it's like Facebook. They know who you are, you know, right. but, uh, but that's super, super important. Is, is there, is there something that you say, Hey, here's the first three things you should do. If you're starting to hire, is there things that people should do that are maybe a free option or a quick option to kind of get the ball rolling? And how do you get your toes wet in, in hiring? Say it's the first time somebody's ever looking for somebody. Yeah, I think the, the best thing to do is probably um, understand, Indeed's probably the biggest job board in the world. They've got free stuff. And I think that you just need to do your homework on the keywords that work in your labor market and your geographic area and sprinkle those around in your job descriptions in the first paragraph. You can post it free on Indeed and you're gonna get application flow almost anywhere you are in the country. And it's just a matter of getting back and sifting through that and having your questions in place. That's what I recommend. The other one is Craigslist and Craigslist used to be awesome. Then they went away and they weren't so good and they're back in, in a lot of parts of the country again. Those are the two ones that I would recommend highly to people that are just kind of starting out in it. Yeah. Now on top of everything, I get, again, probably the most, the most regular question is like, Hey, I think I'm ready to hire my first employee. Like what? I mean, everybody's so in, incredibly scared. Tell somebody who's completely new at that. Like here's the bare bones to what that entails and um, kind of explain that a little bit to people that maybe are looking for the first employee, like calm down, you know, relax. This is how that all goes. Like explain. Yeah. It. yeah that's a good question. It's, and, it, and it, the answer is going to probably surprise everybody. I would first work on my culture at, at my company, okay? Because a lot of what we do is we, we like to talk about our culture and job descriptions and set those expectations, but you damn well better meet those expectations when you do hire somebody or it all blows up on you. Yeah. Um, and, and if you tell people in your, in your ad for recruiting that you pay $500 a week, and you only pay 300, you're not gonna keep somebody around. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just a matter of matching those expectations and realizing what you really can pay and what you really are doing with culture in order to hire somebody. The, that's actually, I think, more important than almost anything in recruiting. Yeah, I love the culture. I, you guys that listen or watch know that I, I mean, we had a stocked fridge and we had uh, every Friday we had uh, lunches. We had ping pong tables in the shop and DJ setups on the second floor. Like we had it. So when we had people come in, I said, okay, great. Well, we've told you a little bit about our company. You've told us a little bit about us, but let me show you kind of what else comes because everybody's so focused on pay, but it's not really all about pay. Like you said, it has to be what you say. But there's so many other things. Do you offer benefits? How can you offer benefits? Do you offer, you know, do, can they take a vehicle home? Do they get a cell phone? What other little things that makes that kind of culture exist? Like what other things can you kind of offer? And that, that's super, that's just as important as having them want to work for, or you wanting them to work for you is having them actually want to work for you. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's probably, you know, like I said, the most important thing. And, and you can develop, you can make it, so cheap. It's, you don't have to, to your point, Josh, you don't have to be, you know, 25 uh, employees, 50. If you're trying to get out of a truck or whatever it is, 
and um, just have, you know, f a, a orange juice coffee and some food and sit down and go, what do you like? You like eggs or you like donuts or you like, what do you need? Yeah. And that, you know, it, it, we had at one time, um, somebody, we were having a hard time with retention with, a, with somebody. And what we found was the first day a uh, an employee came through the door, there's three people out smoking cigarettes, bad mouth in the company. Then they get through the door and every, they're looking around for somebody to, to say hello to. And that's your first day at work. Yeah. What, what changed was we had somebody that their only job when there was a new person starting was to run outside, introduce yourself, know their name and say, hey, Joe, it's nice to see you. Come on in, buddy. What do you like? What do you like in your coffee? All those things matter. How much does that cost you? Yeah. And it's a game changer. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. There's a connection that you can make with people that aren't just the employee, uh, employer kind of relationship. I mean, that, that in general, having somebody want to work for you, I know that throughout the years, I've had guys who've gotten better offers to run other companies. You know, some crew, uh, crew chiefs that I had came to me and were like, hey, just a heads up, uh, it was another company I won't mention in my area. They had uh, wanted me to sit down with them and whatever. They threw some numbers out and uh, yeah, their, their numbers are crazy. And I'm like, I apologize, you know, or is, are you giving your two weeks? No, no, no. I just want to let you know, you know, I, I, they, they don't, they don't do what we do. Like we're, there's so much more than just that money. I mean, there's only so much we can pay, but having that relationship and building, and there's a lot of guys out there who say, I'm not going to be best friends with my employees. I'm, I'm an employer. I'm not a friend. Well, do you want to work for that same situation? Like, do you want to go in and then be scared every day that you're going to get yelled at by the person who sits at the desk? Like, you have to understand that they need to work for you or they need to want to work for you as much as you want them to work for you. And that's a lot of times I'll say, I, would you have your own son or daughter apply for this job that I'm looking at? Yeah. You know, would you tell them that that's a good place you probably ought to work? If you can't look yourself in the mirror and say that to yourself, you better work on your culture. You better mm -hmm. work on it. And that's, uh, I think probably, um, one of the things I see is the biggest mistake out there. Culture is not easy. It's no. easy to come up and say, this is who we want to be and what we want to do, but to do it and, and underline it and shout it out every single day is not easy. Stick with it is a whole nother thing. Yeah. You got it. Now, if somebody doesn't want to do this all on their own, again, say they're new, say they're even just hiring one employee, tell us kind of about blue collar. Like, uh, again, you guys know this is not an, an ad. That's not what I'm going, but I want you to understand kind of what a service can do as compared to kind of doing yourself. So, so tell us a little bit about like, what's the process if I come to you and I say, Hey, I want to get out of the truck. I need one guy. How can we go about this? Sure. The, the best thing that I can suggest is uh, setting up a demo with me. And the demo is this. It takes 15 minutes. I show you exactly what we do to recruit for our own company and hundreds of others. And I said, you can take all this information. It's open, it's transparent and do it on your own. If wow. it works for you, God bless you. I, I it'd call me. I love talking shop. Anytime you want to get a hold of me. If you try it and it doesn't work, give me a buzz back. We'll work. We'll, we'll do it for you. If you, if you are at a point where you know you've tried it and you do not like it and you are very unsuccessful at it, We'll take 15 minutes to show you what we do. And then at the end of the demo, I always say after, here's our price and service. The only responsibility you have is when we find you a human being to interview and hire, please interview and hire them. Interview and hire, interview and hire. And that's all you do is interview and hire. And yeah. we, we find the people for you and vet the living daylights out of them. Wow. That's it. See, there's, this is the thing that... I have a tax guy. I don't like taxes. I have somebody to do that. I have a office manager. I don't like doing office stuff. I have somebody to do that. When it comes to hiring, all of a sudden, everybody's kind of like, I'll do it on my own. Like I, if you hate doing it and you need it on a scale, if you need one person, if you don't know what to do, if you just, if you have any kind of need for that and you want to outsource it, it just makes so much more sense to have somebody take care of it, who knows what they're doing, as opposed to trying to figure everything else yourself. There's so much more things you could be doing with your time than hiring. So I'm an all for kind of recruiting services in general. And I know, uh, I know Blue Collar, I know what you guys have done. You've been on the show, uh, not you, but your company's kind of been on the show for a while. And, and I really dig what you're doing. And, and 
it really just makes a lot of sense. And I think sometimes people are scared of recruiting. They think it's going to cost, you know, oh, well, every time you hire an employee, it costs me $30,000 or something. And it's just, it's the time and things that free up. It just, it makes so much more sense. Yeah. Um, you know, I always tell people for a few hundred bucks a month, for a few hundred bucks a month, we can be your full-time recruiting department. That's all, that's that's all we really are doing. That's really all we do. So if that's something that interests you or you just want to learn more about what we do to make sure that we're not short-staffed, you can just reach out to me at yourblueskies.com, yourblueskies.com slash recruiting. Nice. And that's well, the best way to get a hold of us. Nice. Well, I appreciate it, man. Again, if you're listening, now's the time you got to get hiring anyway. So regardless of which avenue you take to kind of get that, we've talked employees, we've talked about hiring, we've talked about temp agency runs, we've talked about recruiting, we've talked about all of it, but you have to implement something. Get off the fence if you're looking at getting employees this year. Now's the time you're seeing ads all over Facebook for employment, um, getting people to go, starting, getting ready for the season. Don't wait until the light switches on until you hire. It's just, it's not worth waiting. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, hey, I appreciate you uh, hanging out. Give us one more time. How can we get a hold of you? How can people talk to you? Yourblueskies.com slash recruiting. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much for hanging out. Uh, again, if it was your first time, hopefully everything went perfect and you loved it. Go check out the rest of the episodes. But more importantly, make sure you order supplies through me. Shameless plug. It's 862-312-2026. We talked about a tax guy and a recruiting guy. How about having a supplies guy? Give me a call. Let me put the supplies in. It doesn't cost you any extra. And it's like a virtual high five of awesomeness. That's how I make my cheddar. So definitely, definitely do that. Also, Make sure to get a copy of uh, American Window Cleaner Magazine. Uh, this is the February sticker sheet. If anybody wants to know, this is out in mailboxes, but the post office is the worst company in all of history. So, of course, it's going to be delayed. If you haven't gotten your issue yet, I do apologize. Everything is mailed and ready. April, uh, I'm sorry, uh, January for March. March is actually um, coming back from the printer this week and will be in uh, mailboxes this week. But either way, go to American Window Cleaner, uh, awcmag.com forward slash sub. Get your subscription. But either way, until next week, go out there and be epic.